Will they see the chats that came in before they did? I wonder. Got a few people on. Hello, everyone. If you guys are in the building, please say hello. Let us know who you are, where you guys are tuning in from. We're going to start in just a second here. We just opened the live stream. Trinity's back. What's up, Trinity? Yeah, yeah. Baby Yoda, cool name. Hello, hello, guys. What's up, everybody? Professor Demetrius. Well, the professor of jiu-jitsu is what they, what they say when you're a black belt. But uh, Professor Demetrius and April one of our blue belts, and uh, we're here once again. We're going to give you guys about 25, 30 minutes of uh, self-defense for women. could be self-defense actually for anybody. Um, let's say hello to some of the people in our chat. So Trinity, I've seen you here before. Hello to Trinity. Hello, Baby Yoda. We got Smonroy Professor. I'll be curious to know who that is because they said Professor. They might know me. <laughs> Trinity is from Florida. Right on, Biceps Dubai in India. Very cool. Jay Sands, thanks for the teachings. You're very welcome. Oh, Steven, I should have known by the last name. What's up, Steven? Steven likes to come in here from time to time. Well, back in 2018, right? And he would, uh, he would just choke me out as much as he could. Really tough guy. We got Mimi. Bills, what's up? Albert's here, checking in from Riverside. Hey, I have family in Riverside, Albert, right on. And there's a place in Corona called, I think it used to be called Top Team, Corona Top Team. You might even train there, or maybe you know somebody who does. But, uh, yeah, nice little place. Um, okay, so, guys, what we're going to be doing today is something very similar to what we're going to be doing um, in-house later in the week. And I want to show it to you guys because I think it's a very important uh, technique. So um, in about a minute, we're going to get things started with that. Brooke says, hi. What's up, Brooke? Good to have you guys on. Um, watch your live stream in Belize. Wow. Learning techniques. Right on, right on. Okay, guys. So what I'm thinking today is we're going to talk about something that relates to both Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu sport, which is why you see these uniforms on us. We kind of train sport Jiu-Jitsu. And then I'm also going to um, show you something that relates to self-defense as well. Okay. So we've talked before in previous lessons about the ability to stand up correctly, which is called standing in base or in Jiu-Jitsu, they say the technical stand-up move, right? So let me kind of show that to you guys real quick. So whenever I'm here, let's have April kind of play the opponent. Why don't you stand up over here, April? Okay. So if I have an opponent who's standing in front of me, how I get up actually matters, right? And when might this happen? This could happen after I was pushed down, or this could happen if I was at the park or anywhere, festival of some sort, and somebody's standing up and they're being ultra aggressive, okay? If that happens, I need to get myself up on my feet because I'm truly at a disadvantage being in the seated position with them standing up, okay? So for starters, I wouldn't stand up in this distance, I feel like if I'm this close, they have a huge advantage. They could kick me, go ahead and kick, boom. They could punch, they could do all kinds of stuff, right? But if I had a little more space right about here, then I would go ahead and attempt the technical stand-up or the standing in base technique. So what I'm going to do is I always have a knee up with my hand kind of here, relax, like shielding, okay? It can relax when I'm just kind of not sure yet. But once I know that that person means business, the fist is going to be up and the shield is going to be up. OK, now another very important thing is I don't know if you guys can see because we're wearing black, but look at her April's stance. Step a little forward, please. She's got a left leg forward and her right leg is back, which makes me assume that the back leg is a power leg. Right. If she's going to kick hard, the hard kick, the hardest kick is going to come from her back leg. So if I have this one side that I'm shielding, it better be the side that she can deliver power on. OK. So notice how her right leg is back. Now I need to switch and go here. That way if she tries to kick me, it's kind of protected, okay? If I did it the wrong way and she kicked me in my face, 
it would be very hard for this one hand to stop the power of that kick, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I correct my seated position, and now I'm gonna elevate my hip and step behind my hand. So watch how this looks from the backside. I go up here and I come up. A lot of people would say, well, that's not the fastest way to get up. And I would argue that it's, it's maybe not the fastest way to get up. However, it's the safest way to get up. Because a lot of people from here, they don't know what they would do. They would just start to put their hands on the ground. Of course, a push could happen. If I started to come up here, she'd shove me back. If she wanted to kick, now would be a great time to kick. And then it would make it hard for me to get up. So there are a lot of ways to get up that might be faster. However, there are not safer ways to get up. Okay, let's go ahead and switch your stance so I can kind of show them the front. So again, April's back leg is her left leg. My shield is on my right side. In case that kick happens, it's pretty well protected, okay? Now I'm gonna start to elevate my bottom leg and step it under this tunnel behind. So look, here, here, like this. And that's the safest way to get up. Now, as soon as I plant my leg, Again, you gotta watch the configuration of her legs. But when I plant my leg, if she were to rush in, I have a sideways or perpendicular base. So I'm here like this, come up, she tries to push me here. I'm already ready to stop that push. And then I come back and I'm ready to go, okay? So this is just the beginning of the techniques that I wanna show you guys next, okay? Now, one thing I'm gonna ask from you guys in the chat, let's see if you guys are really paying attention. We've got, I think, let me take a look, 21 people here. And only three thumbs up. Can I get some thumbs up from you guys? It just takes a second. Let's see if our, our watchers can give us a quick thumbs up. We can bring the number back up. And then once we do, we got the next technique, right? So let's see. 10 second countdown. Nine, eight, seven. It's coming up. Six, five, four. There we go. Three, two, and you guys are the best. We got it up to 12. I love that, dude. We should do that from the jump. Okay, so now, guys, here's what we're going to talk about. We're here in the seated positions, right? And this person is going to get close enough to where I don't feel safe standing up, okay? If that happens, the best place for me to actually go is further down. So if April tried to approach me here, I'm safest here, okay? The reason being, I could kick back up a little. I could kick towards her knees, which could be very powerful and devastating kicks. Or if she continued to come in, I could block her right at the hips here. Now, what's important about this is that my legs have what we call a medium bend in the legs, okay? From this position, I have a little bit of mobility available. I can kind of use them, okay? I'm not so extended that she could drop my legs and push them straight to the ground, okay? We don't want that. And they're not so bent that if she's here, she could reach my face with punches, okay? So the goal for you guys is to have a medium bend with your heels in and your toes out. So we're here, boom. Now my hands, of course, I wanna respect my partner's ability to dive in with punches. If they're a serious attacker, then this is one of the best places for me to hold them back and go here, okay? Now, from this position, we're gonna work on something called a tripod sweep. Now, a lot of people think that I mean, if you're from the outside looking into this position or this situation, you're going to say that person has a humongous advantage. This one's losing terribly already. OK, but watch what happens here as I go from this position and she tries to come in. OK, widen your base, get serious about your reaches. Yeah, she's going for this. Exactly. So my hands are up. OK, watch what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to raise my hip off of her forward pressure and I'm gonna throw it out to one side. Now, whatever side I choose, in this case, I'll push my hip to my right. I'm gonna keep my right hand pretty high up and my left is gonna grab that ankle. So I'm here like this, she's kind of reaching, boom, boom. Watch my hip, up and out, okay? Now, once I get here, I hook with what we call a monkey grip, which means we're not gonna use our thumb. The thumb would be a C grip, okay? But I feel like with the thumb grip, the opening, gone okay with the monkey grip my four fingers really curl actually you could even say your five fingers really curl around the achilles tendon and it's very hard to kick that leg away okay now on the high side i'm still blocking because i always got to respect my opponent's ability to punch me okay and now i'm going to take whatever the opposite leg is so in this case i'm using my left to grab her ankle so my right 
is going to hook. Let's give a better view of that, April. So let's turn this way. So you'll see that from here, I went ahead and moved my hip, trap here, and hook here. Okay, this is why we call it the tripod. There are three key points to this position. Let's go ahead and back out completely. Let me get adjusted so you guys can see me better. So one, two, three. Three key points. One more time. So April's here, medium bend in the legs. My arms are up protecting myself. I move my hip to the outside and control the ankle, okay? Now I'm going to hook the knee right here. Now there's some argument in the instructors of jiu-jitsu community about where to put this particular hook. The reason is, turn that way. If you put your shoelaces behind the person's knee and they sit in a practice situation close to their ankle, they're gonna smash this foot between these two things, okay? So some people say hook lower, so you're safe. I agree with that. It is safer, but it doesn't feel as secure. This foot has a better home here, okay? So I wanna lock my toes. Now watch what happens here. I'm gonna back up so we don't hit the camera. Now it's time to show you the actual sweep. We're here, protect, hips out, hook. Now watch my middle leg. I push here, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch hands and stand in base right here. And now it's time for me to clear and move to maybe side control or something like that, okay? We're gonna do it a couple times. Fix my belt real quick. Real quick, look at the chat. Esther's here, Carmen, Strawberry Sugar, Wilfredo Velez. We got people in Canada watching. Christina, what's up? Okay, Ray is here. Sorry, it's 11.30 p.m. Have to go to bed. Understandable, Christina. Good night. Hey, our buddy Edgy Waggy is here. South Florida, what's up? And Jose. All right, so <laughs> Jose says, can someone throw someone, please? I'll do something better than that at the end, okay? So one more thing. Now, we're here. Remember, seated position. The person gets too close for my liking for me to think about standing up. They come in a little bit too much. This is not a good time to stand up. It's a good time to lay back. So from right here, I lay back. Boom. Feet are here. Don't underestimate also the opportunity that you might have to kick someone in the face from this position. If April were to give me a target but move her head away from that target, drive in a little towards me, I could drive in a little. Good. I could raise my hip. Boom. And blast from this position, okay? So don't underestimate the opportunity to kick the face from this position, okay? Now, when it comes time for them to swing and so on, I'm gonna move my hips out, trap their ankle, trap the opposite knee. Press the highest point, so my left foot remains on the hip, I shove the left foot, I pull the ankle, and I pull here as well, creating the fall. Now from here, I switch, to stand up and base correctly. And of course, I wouldn't just, you know, uh, stand up and do nothing. I have to choose whether it's time to run or whether it's time to get in a dominant position, which would be probably around her legs. So turn your legs towards me. So if you do happen to get up from here and you can clear this, boom, then we might drop down to side control if it's a sport situation. And if it's a self-defense situation, knee on belly, is pretty solid because from here I can hold her down, maybe punch if needed, and also transfer myself directly to the mount, okay? A lot of people say, well, when you mount for self-defense, you can arm bar, but think about that for a quick second. If I throw my leg over your mouth and I lay back to get your arm, you're gonna bite my leg. I would, would you? I mean, maybe I'm a savage, I don't know. But the point is, if it's my arm breaking, or biting your leg, I'm gonna bite leg. So in the mount position, I actually don't recommend you guys to do arm locks on people, okay? Let's give you an example, because if you haven't seen that before, you should see it. So if I'm here like this and she's pushing me, okay, and I sort of trap her arm, and then from here I come around, boom, oh, look what happens. I have this arm now, and I'm about to break it. If that happens, she's absolutely gonna go great white shark on me and bite my leg, because there's no chance she wants this arm to break rather than do something like that, okay? So be careful when you mount people in street situations. When it comes to um, the streets, no rules. So when you mount, 
and you throw your leg over the face for an arm bar, it's my time, okay? Let's do it again. So here, let's have a different angle here. So April's a little backed up, okay? If we have distance, we stand in base, and we're good to go, okay? If we do not have distance, we go back to our back and use our legs as spacers between our partner and ourselves. Legs are longer than arms, but don't extend them fully because they're easy to push down. So here, I go in, boom, medium bend. Hands are here, boom, give me a target. If you have a chance, target please. Bah. Right here, I could kick, okay? Or I can move my hip and grab, lock, push, and I can get up and get away, okay? So we call this the tripod sweep, very powerful sport technique and also self-defense jiu-jitsu technique that we can use. Are there any questions about that or has anybody seen that before? Very curious. We got Daniel Berrigan, what's up? Carmen's here, Ray Stewart. Joe Servino says that girl is a savage. I agree, she is. She don't miss too many classes, let me tell you. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys something that we kind of use a little bit more in the sport and we're gonna do actually, like I said, later in our week here at the Academy. Uh, so if you are a student of the Academy, you might wanna log off right now, you know what I mean? Cause you don't wanna be, uh, you know, you wanna be surprised when you come in, it's more fun to be surprised. So whenever I sit somebody down with a tripod sweep, if they're not knowledgeable in jujitsu, Chances that it works are very, very good, okay? But if they are a little more knowledgeable, a lot of times they try to fight, like to get back up quickly. And it's a race. It's a race to get to our feet. So let's kind of explore that for a second. So April's going to stand up, okay? We're going to start off here, same scenario. And I'm going to move my hip and grab, okay? Now let's talk about some really important principles when it comes to when I sit her down, okay? So once I push this hip, what's going to happen, by the way that I'm rotating her, this hip opens. And I don't know if you guys know this or have ever thought about this, but there's a principle of jiu-jitsu where if I control somebody's ankle and I take my palm and I push their knee open, they sit down, okay? This is kind of a fun trick that I use on my niece and my nephew sometimes, right? So the idea, again, is that if I'm just focused on this ankle and this knee gets pushed outside the ankle, unless she backsteps with this leg, she's going to sit down every single time. You see wrestlers who sometimes shoot in, and when they get really low and they shoot, they get to here and they use their neck to push it. And they call that a low single, okay? So if you control the ankle and open the knee, people will sit down unless they move their other leg, which is why the tripod sweep works. So for example, even though I'm not grabbing the knee itself, I'm still hooking this leg and pushing that hip, creating the same effect and sitting April down here, okay? Now, here's another golden rule that you have to understand. If that person starts to get up and they're on their right, they need their right leg, right? April, try and stand up, but I'm gonna just own this, go. No, you can't go left. Exactly, okay? So the rule is that if you guys ever knock somebody down and they're on this side, they need this leg somehow to get up. If you continue to pull this leg, the only thing they can do to get up is go to the other side. And when that happens, they expose better things for me. To give you an example, April's gonna sit right here in front of me, okay? She's on her right. Can you get up without putting your left down on the floor? It just doesn't work, and all I'm doing is a simple grip. Now, can you completely switch sides and get up? I think you can there, but look, this gives me a lot of opportunities. And in jiu-jitsu, we're always looking for the back. So that's a good thing, right? So when I knock somebody down, and I get the chance to grab the leg on the side that their hand is down, they're not getting up. And that's a big thing to understand. Let's do it again. 
start over here. Boom. Boom. Okay. Now, in sport jiu-jitsu, we're not running from the fight. We're trying to enter to look for submissions. So what I want to show you guys right now is what we call an ashigarami, which is a leg lock or a leg entanglement that can lead to a leg lock. Okay. So, for example, turn a little this way, April. Okay. So once she falls from my sweep, my knee is going to go inside like this. And now I'm going to start to bring my arm over her foot like so. Okay. So the goal is going to be to get my leg inside first. And then immediately I'm going to bite with my arm around her Achilles tendon. So the best placement for me is right here, right at the very bottom. If you go up here, people have enough muscle sometimes to be able to hold you off. But if I get a nice deep bite, bring it back and I lock it in, we're in good position. Now I can go over her calf or excuse me, over her shin and grab. And then I can bring my feet together like this. And the goal is to lock. This is the ashigarami, which is the leg entanglement, how I'm controlling her leg. And now I start to arch and I get the stretch, which will tear the tendons in the foot and could break somebody's foot. So you got to be very careful. Okay. Let's put the pieces together. So we're here. Standing up. Yeah. So block, hip, hook, push, and enter. As soon as I get here, I grab and I bring my legs around. We're both wearing black geese, so it's kind of hard to see whose leg is where and so on, right? But now from here, one, two, arch, and finish. So there are some cool options that we have when it comes to uh, finishing, you know, with submissions. And some of those submissions are good to keep you away from the punches that might try that might happen. Others are great to kind of reverse the opponent, get up and get home safe, which is what we recommend for our women's program, because the goal ultimately is to get home safe. It's not to sit there and win the fight or go back in if you have a clear exit. OK, guys. So one more time, I'm going to ask you guys that if you guys enjoyed the class, we would appreciate you guys hitting that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that as well. Uh, we have, let's see, 25 people in. So, again, a thumbs up is super appreciated. And a subscription is even more appreciated. And then, guys, we're going to be trying to do this as often, I'd say twice a week if we can. So, Tuesdays and third, uh, sorry, Mondays and Wednesdays from usually 6.30 to 7.30, we're going to try and get on. Okay? So, thank you guys for checking it out. Hope you guys have a great day and hope everybody had a really good Easter as well. All right? Thank you guys. We'll see you on the very next video.